It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC G2460PF. The OSD is controlled by tactile buttons on the underside of the bottom monitor bezel towards the right side. You can see there are little indentations there that show you what each button does. There's also a little power um, status indicator here, a little power LED, that's green when the monitor's on, orange when it's on standby, and if you turn the monitor into a low power state or off by pressing the power button, it'll go off as well. The first button along there allows you to control the input source used by the monitor. The second button along allows you to configure a new feature of the monitor, game mode. And this isn't a feature I'm particularly fond of. There are basically various different settings which in one way or another upset the, the balance of the image by causing oversaturation and uh, crushing shade range and just basically giving the image a not very nice, not very natural or realistic look. So not a great new feature but there are various different settings you can play around with there if you want to want to have a go with them. Third button along there, a little right arrow, allows you to control the volume of the integrated speakers of the monitor or any audio source which you've got uh, connected to uh, one of the jacks on the monitor, the 3.5mm jacks. The fourth button along controls the main menu. This is set out in AOC's usual style. Um, it takes up quite a lot of horizontal um, screen space. That's how they like to set their monitor menus out, and that's fine. First bit of the menu here is Illuminance, and that allows you to adjust their basic settings like the contrast and the brightness. There's also an eco mode setting here and all that does is set the brightness to a certain preset value. There are three different gamma settings you can use which are explored in the review. There's DCR which stands for dynamic contrast ratio and that allows you to use the dynamic contrast feature of the monitor which is again explored in the review and another feature explored in the review is overdrive um, the pixel overdrive or grey to grey acceleration of the, the monitor so you can adjust the, the intensity of this and there are various different settings there off, weak, light, medium and strong there's a game mode feature which I've um, talked about just before and there's another new feature here that I haven't seen on AOC monitors before called shadow control and that's basically like BenQ's graphic equaliser. It's a sort of digital brightness slash gamma alteration feature. And I, as I say in the review, it's um, I don't really see the utility in this because at 50, which is the, the default, um, everything's fine. You then knock that down to 40, which is the next lowest setting, and everything's just far too dark, and uh, it doesn't improve the... The black level at all because that's set by the backlight of the monitor the the brightness level and um, this doesn't change that so this is completely digital and I don't really see the utility in it so if you adjust it past 50 the default so the next one up 60 it then just gives a completely flooded look to the image and even more so if you uh, do it any higher so it's uh, I don't really see the point in this feature to be honest it's uh, there if you want to play with it anyway there's image setup which is greyed out because that's um, something that would only apply to analog or VGA connections or digital connections that's all set up for you absolutely perfectly by default there's a colour setup menu and that allows you to select a predefined colour temperature setting so there's user which allows you to manually adjust the red, green and blue colour channels. Um, there's warm, which isn't actually particularly warm, it's slightly warmer than the uh, some of the other ones, such as cool, which is obviously cooler in, uh, in tone. And there's an sRGB setting, which is uh, has a locked brightness, it's very bright, and I talk about that in the review as well. DCB mode, dynamic colour boost, and this just basically selectively oversaturates certain aspects of the image. So it's got full enhance, which will um, oversaturate all of the all of the channels. There's nature skin, which is supposed to highlight reds and pink tones and stuff like that. 
green field which does the same with greens, sky blue which does the same with blues. It's a picture boost setting um, which allows you to control this bright frame thing which I've talked about uh, in various other reviews. It's something that you see on quite a lot of AOC monitors and this just allows you to independently control the brightness and contrast levels of a certain uh, portion of the screen and that's the digital brightness level it's it's not the same as the main brightness control of the monitor it doesn't do anything to the backlight because obviously the backlight is controlled as a single unit for the whole monitor you can't just get the monitor to make one particular part of the screen physically pump out more luminance for you than the rest or less so it's, it's a completely digital controls there An OSD setup menu that allows you to control various aspects of the OSD itself, for example, the language that it's displayed in, the timeout period, so how long it will be displayed on the screen after the last button press before it automatically disappears. I mean, you can, of course, manually exit the menu by uh, pressing the, the source select, which counts as the, the back button several times. There is DP capability, and that's just for compatibility purposes. Um, I don't know if you can see this properly because of the icons I've got on my uh, my desktop, just beneath them. But that is 1.2, which you'll want to keep it on if you want to use FreeSync on the monitor. You'll have to keep it on if you want to use FreeSync. Um, so 1.2 gives you the full capabilities. You can. Chain it to 1.1 if you're using an older system which doesn't actually support DP 1.2 uh, and you want to use the display port. You can change the horizontal and vertical position of the menu itself on, on the screen where it's displayed. You can change the transparency level, the transparency, which I probably should have done earlier so that you could actually see the menu a bit better, but it's a bit too late for that now. So you can make it more transparent, or you can make it uh, opaque if you want. There's a break reminder feature, and what that will do is it will just give you a little reminder on the screen after you've been using the, the monitor or your computer for an hour, just to remind you to take a break. So it will do that every hour if you've got that feature turned on. There's extra, which is basically the, the, the rest of the settings. So this again allows you to select the input as you can with the, uh, the first button there before you've actually got onto the main menu. Auto config, which is a, again, it applies to analog connections, VGA connections, so it's grayed out here with digital connections. There's an off timer feature, so the screen will automatically switch off after a certain period of time between 1 hour and 24 hours. Image ratio, um, it's just full and wide I believe and it's not available in the native resolution, it just allows you to control how certain non-native resolutions are displayed in terms of their aspect ratio, it's fairly limited in its functionality anyway. There's DDC slash CI which allows you to control the full plug and play functionality of the monitor and will allow you to control the monitor using software and stuff like that. So just leave that enabled um, or set to yes, unless you've got a sort of old legacy system that doesn't support it or something strange like that. And there's a feature here that allows you to just reset everything on the OSD to the factory defaults. And finally, there's a little, little section here which shows you the resolution the monitor's using the horizontal frequency and the vertical frequency, with, with the vertical frequency being the important one to note there. Um, that's what people commonly just call the refresh rate. And set to 144 Hz, it's a 144 Hz monitor. And if you're actually running a game or, or anything else that uses FreeSync, and FreeSync's enabled on the monitor and your graphics card, it'll actually have in brackets FreeSync after, um, after that. I'll, I'll just quickly open um, a game and 
to show you that it does actually say FreeSync when it's using FreeSync. So bear with me. I'm just trying to find which game will, will load the quickest for you uh, of my collection. Probably none of them. So I have to connect to Steam and all of that, which takes a bit of time. And knowing my luck, it'll probably need to update Steam and everything as well. Okay, so after I launch this, the screen should go blank as it usually does, and then if I return to the OSD, cross fingers, it should say, yeah, free sync in brackets there. So there you go. That was the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC G2460PF, or G2460PF, or whatever you want to call it. Be sure to check out the full review on pcmonitors.info.